Hello Facebook, I'm Heather here at NEMA and today I'm joined with Sharon who is our lead product manager and we are talking all about Peanut today. Yes, really, really excited to share Super some more excited. news. Super excited. I mean, we, we usually talk all about gluten but today we're going to be talking about the Peanut sensor which is still in development um, but planned for launch later this year. And Sharon, you're kind of leading the whole development process for the Peanut sensor, is that right? Yep, so I'm leading product management here at NEMA and one of our products is the peanut sensor. And so it's been really fun to see us go from really determining what is the right sensor to build for the community. And now that we are moving forward is how do we optimize it and really bring it into the wild, as we like to say. So if you have questions about the peanut sensor that's in development, go ahead and let us know in the comments. We're going to be responding and, and checking questions here. Um, my first question is, where are we in the development process? What's going on? Yeah, so Heather, we have now gotten into what we call the alpha phase of development. Alpha is really when we've taken all the technology that we've been working on, both on the sensor side as well as the capsule side, and brought that technology, the chemistry, into the device. So on the device side, what we have now is all of the sensor technology that we've really optimized and improved for Peanut because as we'll talk in a second about this, Peanut has a lower limit of detection that's mm -hmm. required, so we need to be extra sensitive. Um, as well as the chemistry that goes into the capsule, we want to be able to test it in the real world on real food. Um, prior to this, we were really testing everything in a controlled environment, so lab testing, seeing if we spike food with peanuts, so that means we're adding actual peanut protein to the food, can we detect these levels using our chemistry? And we've proven it in the lab, but now we really want to see it in the real world. So we've uh, started getting food from local bakeries, restaurants, and trying to see, can we see if there's peanut in the food, what's cross-contamination like, and um, having those conversations with community members to make the next steps. It's so exciting. Yeah. Especially even just seeing a capsule with peanut chemistry in it is awesome for our team. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to check here for questions in case we have any. Uh, but in the meantime, what is our limit of detection going to be for the sensor, for peanut? Yeah. So as you know, the lim limit of detection for gluten is 20 parts per million, and that's an FDA standard. Mm -hmm. So to be gluten-free, you have to be below 20 ppm. However, with peanut, the interesting thing is that there is no FDA regulation. Mm -hmm. So what we had to do was really go out, study a lot of journals, clinical data, talk to all the professionals in the industry to dive in and see what is that limit for for the individual mm -hmm. itself and themselves. And what we found is that 0.5 milligrams of peanut protein in 100 milligrams of diet is what affects a person, and that's equivalent to five parts per million. Okay. And so we're gonna be testing below that. And the five PPM is really a level that is on the bottom line. So that's where above that, if someone reacts, is when they're considered allergic, but most people are at even higher levels. Mm -hmm. So this really helps us ensure that we're below that threshold. Gotcha. So why don't we go ahead and run a test? Ooh, okay, exciting. See how it works. Yeah. And again, just to caveat this, early, early prototype, early. a lot's still gonna be tested and yeah. probably changed and modified, but just to kind of see if we can pick up cross-contamination or you yeah. know different types of things we can test even. Yeah, so we have a few interesting products here. Some of them we won't be testing, but we have you know, a peanut butter sandwich, some uh, peanut m and some peanut butter, and then the all-favorite Cracker Jacks. It's the all-time favorite uh, baseball treat. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test some of this to see if we can pick up cross-contamination because what it is is popcorn that has caramel on it, but also peanuts in the bag. And um, we'll see what happens. So. And so someone who's peanut allergic or intolerant wouldn't eat Cracker Jacks. Never. Because it's in the box or in the bag here. Yeah. Uh, but it's just a way for us to kind of see if the popcorn has touched peanuts, what kinds of stuff we'll pick up. Exactly. So um, I'm going to grab some food from here. Let me grab ooh, a, pe um, a piece of popcorn. And I'm going to... <laughs> Break up a little bit off. It's a little bit um, stale, unfortunately, <laughs> it looks like. Um, and I'm just going to toss that right in here. And so, similar to gluten, you want just a pea sized sample. Just a pea sized sample. Okay. So, closing it up. Let me clean up a little. <laughs> my mess. And ugh, there we go. Okay. So, uh, we're going to turn on the device. 
and it looks really familiar to those of you who know our gluten sensor, but at the end, we might see a different sign. So okay. let's see what happens. And by the way, uh, full disclosure, I'm not allergic to peanuts, so that is Neither why of us I are. can <laughs> handle it. And we're gonna let this run um, while we continue chatting. That's great. So what types of foods will we, will we be able to test, or will Nima be able to test for peanut? I mean, you know, for our gluten sensor, hydrolyzed gluten is something we can't detect, so things like soy sauce, gluten-free beer. Is there anything with peanut that's kind of equivalent that we won't be able to test? Yeah, so I'll start with what we can test. Okay. Um, so what we can test is everything from baked goods to sauces, soups, um, ice cream is a really popular one. The more we talk to community members, the more excited they are about ice cream and, <laughs> and shared facility. Especially now that it's summertime. Yeah, really, especially hot today in San Francisco. Yes, here. yes. Um, so all of those things we really can detect mm -hmm. um, and test. Um, the one caveat really just to note in terms of peanuts is that um, peanut oil, which has been highly refined, does not contain any um, peanut in it. So there's no peanut allergens actually mm. in it. So the proteins aren't there. The proteins are not there, which okay. also means someone won't react. And so Nima can't detect anything because there's nothing in it. Gotcha. Um, however, crude oils can be tested and I mean all oils can be tested, but crude oils we will detect those um, the peanut proteins in it directly. But otherwise anything really can be tested. We don't have any limitations right now to what can and what cannot. So when you're in a restaurant, is there a way to tell the difference between if you're getting served refined or crude oil? Like, is that something that kitchens know when they're looking at labels? So typically um, kitchens for um, bigger chains mm -hmm. are using those refined okay. oils. It's more of the kitchens that are maybe using it more like a sauce or a dressing or something to um, highlight the food more than anything and that's when those oils aren't good gotcha and so in those situations it's really like anything else similar to our gluten sensors having that conversation and asking questions and seeing are you you know what kind of oil are you using why um, one of the concerns that people sometimes have in the oil is cross-contamination so if there was potentially a peanut ingredient mm -hmm. that was put into the oil similar to gluten that can cause cost contamination sure um, so that's a conversation to have um, what we found is it's really useful to have a conversation around what is the menu how is the food prepared and understanding are they using separate utensils a new space changing out their gloves before they prepare your meal to ensure that it's really safe and then what about the different types of peanuts? I mean, is there just one specific type that people eat? Are there multiples? How does that work? There are so many varieties yeah. of peanuts. Um, what we are testing for is ultimately an allergen that can be detected across many varietals. 80% um, of peanuts, though, are from Runner, Virginia, Spanish, and Valencia hmm. peanuts. And so for those 80% of the peanuts is really what we're targeting and testing. But because we are targeting an allergen that's present across all peanut varietals, or the majority, um, we are planning on being able to detect really any peanut. But that's 80% of them right there, okay. and most of them in the US. And then what about cooked versus raw peanuts? Yeah, so we can detect both. Um, it's no problem, roasted peanuts, fried peanuts, baked, if it's a baked good. Um, one of our favorite things to test in the office are the baked goods. <laughs> so, you know, cookies, brownies, those are ultimately the popular things. And we have, we have a, a test, test result. result. Um, it looks like peanut was found yeah, in these cracker jacks. Yeah, let me get this a little closer to the thing. And maybe our camera, can, operator, camera can operator can, can you zoom in. in? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> So that's awesome. Just like an early prototype here, we're able to yeah. detect that cross-contamination in the, in the in Cracker, the cracker Jack. Jack bag. That's exciting. That's really exciting. Um, and so, yeah, we're, I'm really happy with the results. Yay! And so with the different, so the cooked versus raw, um, yeah. does the protein actually change at all? I mean, I know for gluten, it, it doesn't change when you cook it. Does it, the protein change it, for peanut? It, it does change, um, but again, not to the point where we would not we can't be able to it. detect it. Okay. Yep. So what's next for testing? I mean, we've got this, we've got Cracker Jacks down pat, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what's <laughs> next? Yeah, so next. So as I mentioned, we have our alpha devices mm -hmm. in-house. 
this being one of them. And we are out and about around San Francisco as we travel. Heather herself, you travel oh, yes. a good amount, <laughs> uh, trying to collect food and mm -hmm. see really what we can test. We're also in the process of starting to have the in-person alpha testing. So that means we have local customers come in, testing uh, the actual product with them, and we'll be entering our beta testing, which is really having someone take a device home with them and test it the way they normally would in the mm -hmm. wild um, coming up in the next couple of months. So really, really excited for that. That is exciting. So yeah. when you're doing you know, interviews or conver having conversations with people that avoid peanuts, what are the types of things that they're most concerned about and what do they really want to test with NEMA? Yeah, so there's a range of things, but ultimately one of the most popular things is baked goods and ice cream. Um, ice cream being made in a shared facility mm -hmm. a lot of the time is a big concern. You can imagine you want to just get that simple chocolate ice cream or vanilla ice cream, but you know what, they also make something like a Reese's peanut butter ice yeah. cream. And you don't know if the equipment was cleaned well or not. Um, so that's something that people are interested in as well as the waffle cones. Um, in addition to baked goods, um, it's not only outside, but it's also birthday parties, children's birthday parties. You know, they bring that cake. Were the parents careful enough to make sure it's safe for your own child? Sure. Um, and then Asian food is extremely mm -hmm. popular as well. So certain cuisines, um, like Thai, for mm -hmm. example, a lot of the sauces Sure, are and made. Pad Thai, they throw some chopped up peanuts on exactly. top. Exactly, and you never know. I mean, maybe they threw those nuts on there, and then we're like, oh, shoot, the person said they can't, yeah. and just scrape it off, and there's still some peanut left, or maybe they used peanut oil to yeah. garnish it. That's true. Well, that's really exciting. It looks like we don't have many questions. Okay. Um, those are all my questions. Anything else you want to share about the peanut process of, of developing the sensor and yeah. what's happening? Um, I think just it's been absolutely amazing talking with the community. We love hearing from you. We love understanding your story and you know what your lifestyle is. Mm -hmm. um, so you know do feel free if you have any questions or anything do reach out to support at nemasensor.com let us know your story um, and also we are in you know we have the wait list for the peanut sensor so do go on our website nemasensor.com and sign up for that or you can always email support at nemasensor.com as well they can help you with that um, but definitely wanna you know spread the knowledge so feel free to share this video or anything on our website with anyone you know who might be interested or in need of a peanut sensor. And we actually have a special uh, URL if you do want to sign up for the wait list for peanut. It's nemasensor.com slash peanut. So it's super easy to remember. Oh, easy. Super easy to sign up. You'll Great. start getting some emails and product updates. Um, and Sharon, we're excited to share even more with the community in the, in the next couple of months. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks, Heather. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Bye.